Okay, Stampscape's new nature set number 33, the Desert 3 plate. These are what the images look like. This is a an enlarged um, print of the imagery that is on here. The plate is about six by nine inches and the imagery are all placed within that um, parameter there. Um, so we have the buttes here, a couple foreground images. Um, some of these are upside down just because I could place them on the plate um, with more spacing in there, but um, a couple different um, animals in the little kangaroo rat right here. We have these bats right here. These bats right here, you know, it'd be like akin to watching them fly out of a, like some cavern or something like that, but you can always just ink up like five of them or something like that. That's the beauty of rubber stamps, right? You don't have to ink up the entire image if you want a smaller area of it. If you want a butte that's this big right here, then you just ink up that side of it. So, um, yeah, let's test these out and let's see how they go. So what I do when I get one of my plates in is that I check the um, magnesium, we call these mags in the uh, stamping world, just for short. But I'm checking around on here just to see if there's any kind of additional um, little um, spot or something like that. Um, we, they call it a pimple usually. You usually don't get that too often anymore though because you used to submit hard copy things. So I might submit a, you know, a six by nine hard copy um, paste up of all these images. So typically they would be um, cut out, you know, you'd go and get them, um, get as high of a quality um, black and white copy of it, of your original, and then you would paste it up onto a layout like that. So sometimes where that little line around your objects um, was, Sometimes that would uh, print out or something like that. It might catch a shadow, you know, the camera work might catch a little bit of a shadow. So you'd have see all these little kind of pimply areas on here. No, um, these companies you would usually, or you you know, if you were making it yourself, you just de-pimple, you take like a, um, you know, some sort of filing device or something like that tool, like a Dremel tool or something like that and just de pimple. You don't want a raised um, little area on here, but this one is perfectly clean. There isn't a single area like that. You still get some little bit of pimpling once in a while with an isolated little dot somewhere. You don't want it too close to your image. Otherwise you really got to get in there, but um, I don't know. My rubber guy has been doing this for, you know, I don't know, whatever, 25 years and, uh, you know, he knows his stuff. So it's easy for him to do that if there was, um, any kind of irregularity on here. So, um, yeah. Oh, oh, it looks like there was one right here. Actually, I, cha I changed my mind. There's this little thing right here. You can see where there's probably like a little Dremel tool or something like that, that filed that off which is no big deal. If it's around on the perimeter, it's not really any big deal. You just don't want it within the, the field of imagery. Okay, so I have my, I'm going to be using a cling foam version set here. And let's get to some impressions. So I'm not going to stamp out um, some scenes here. I'm just checking for um, impression quality and um, seeing what we have here. I have a piece of glossy cardstock and a piece of semi-gloss right here. They're nice and smooth. Um, the semi-gloss cardstocks are really good for, um, you know, any types of inks you want to use. The glossy cardstocks look for a little bit more of a dynamic um, impression, and especially with, when it comes to transparent inks, a little bit more vibrancy because this is going to be sealed off more than um, like a semi-gloss or of course a matte where your media is going to get absorbed into the paper where this one's good for kind of a little bit more dynamic range and um, intensity in terms of your media. This one's good for things like um, the dye based inks as well. And, you know, it, a lot of it doesn't get soaked in because it is a semi-gloss at least, but you can use, um, it's still flat enough to where you can use, or matte enough where you can use things like colored pencil, which I love using.
Okay, so I need um, some pretty big blocks for a couple of these images. Let's go for let's go for my uh, well, this one that I've been really excited about. Um, I'm excited about all of these, but one maybe a little bit more so in the um, the natural bridge. I didn't share. Let me see. The, yeah, I think I need my full. Um, this tack and peel is so tacky this time. I think I mentioned uh, I cleaned it off with a little bit of soap this time, and man, it brought that thing like back to br like brand new uh, tackiness, and it's like hardly new at all. And this is, I've been using this block for many, many years now. You can see my tack and peels kind of uh, stained. Let's see here. Is this? Yeah, that doesn't quite fit. Let's do the whole thing here. In usage, I would probably use this one, smaller one that just. Well, I mean, I could do it this way too. It'll fit like that. You know, I could stamp it like that. But let's just use my big block. Okay, I'm just going to be using my die based ink right here for this. Now, I when you have brand new stamps, especially if you have ones that are really solid, they have like. A lot of solid area what you might want to do is you might want to a lot of times what I do is I just kind of rub it like that with my thumb you know and you know wipe out wipe off some of the mold kind of release material but when it's kind of more tonal like that with just a little bit of um kind of texturing in there um, you really don't need to I don't know prep your imagery uh, before usage. It may be with certain types of inks, I don't know. Maybe if the inks are like super um, thick, you know, styles of inks. Um, watery too. I, I, I don't know. There aren't too many um, inks like that. They're out there like that. But, you know, in those cases, maybe, you know, if you don't get a really good impression, especially in the more solid areas of the stamp, um, not just for stamps, but any, any stamps, any new stamps that you get, you might want to condition the uh, surface slightly. All right. That gave me a really good impression right there. There's zero issues with it, and it... I don't know if there's more um, detail than I thought it would have, but um, it... That is the level of detail that, you know, I had hoped to see in this natural bridge here. I see this as like, kind of like a foreground image. Let's go a little bit more um, higher up on this. Okay, now I typically have this coming in from the right side. I, I would have this going off the side of the page right there. But see, here's my second impression with it right there. And here's my first impression on the glossy. See right in here, it isn't quite as dark. And that's, again, that's in the solid area. I have a little bit of open texturing in there, which I do. I don't like to have all silhouette if I don't have to. I mean, sometimes I do that for certain reasons on certain types of stamps, but I like to have some texturing in there because of this issue with um, kind of like fisheye of imagery. So that's just a technical thing with stamps. But um, I don't know. Uh, you can see my second impression right there. It's a little bit darker than this first impression right here. So like even just like a couple impressions into a new design, it's pretty much ready to go um, in terms of conditioning. And then when you kind of do this right here, I stamp off my stamp and I kind of rock it or twist it a little bit like that to get the ink off but that also kind of conditions your um, rubber really nicely too. It kind of roughs it up a little bit um, or I don't know it also kind of removes I guess in doing so it's also removing some of that um, mold resist you know, that allows the rubber to come out of the uh, the mold really easily. There's some residual um, a whatever material or spray 
on the surface of your stamp. So if you remove that, you know, all the better. Okay, let's stay with um, my foreground types of imagery. This is a um, kind of like a sand dune type of um, texturing. And I see it being used like in foregrounds or one of the things I would do though, I kind of designed it to, or I don't know, I foresee it being used is you ink this up, then you dab off a little bit off the bottom so it kind of transitions. So you can do multiple dunes, like, you know, like a dune sea, this undulating dune sea with these textures, but I'm just going to do it. I'm testing for impressions right here in this video. Impression quality. So I just want to make sure that, um, you know, across this image, you know, we don't have any kind of like artifacts or anything like that in there that um, that's not supposed to exist. I can pretty much tell just by eyeballing this whole thing, you know, that um, looking at things that nothing's out of place, you know, you can pretty much tell, you know, right away, um, you know, how things are. After all, you know what I mean? I spent like, you know, a lot of time on the designs, you know, in each little tiny, you know, three <laughs> millimeter in each little millimeter of the design so I can just eyeball it, you know, until instantly if something's kind of out of place, you know, that I didn't intend. Now right in here I'm looking for um, things that I, I retained some little dots and some little specks right in here. And I wasn't quite sure if that was going to um, translate to the etching you know, the metal etching, which is the uh, magnesium right here, and then make it into the mold and then make it onto the rubber. But it did. It caught every little tiny little speck in here um, in this little open area within the dune, um, which I wanted, you know. So, I don't know. I mean, they, they, you know, the these rubber stamps like this are not the, you know, the most detailed types of um, things you can do. I mean, like dollar bills or something like that, or, you know, the portraits of presidents and things like that are, you know, those are etchings and those are printed. You know, they're using, um, you know, those master engravers make those things and those, the details on that type of thing are like far more, you know, intricate. Yeah, that's offset printing, you know, on onto those, but um, but still, those plates are uh, like vastly more kind of intricate, and the line quality on them, you know, it's like really really fine. But that being said, it's good to see that um, you know these things that are probably like a fraction of a millimeter can still get um, you know are replicated you know, for us in the like crafting industry, um, you know, engraving, uh, process purposes, whatever industrial purposes. Um, like my engraving company, you know, I don't know, I don't know. It's, I don't know how many, how much of their business is or used to be or ever was rubber stamping, but it's probably a, just a fraction of it. Um, a lot of the, uh, engraving is probably, um, I don't know, kind of more industrial types of um, purposes. Okay, let's see. This one's a Desert Butte, i.e., you know, somewhat like the, uh, you know, Arizona, Utah kind of area, Four Corners type of thing right here. Um, someone was mentioning that uh, it'd be kind of interesting having like this alien or something like that type of abduction <laughs> happening right above one of these. It would be, that would be cool. All right, getting this one inked up. I can see it kind of resisting my ink a little bit as I'm tapping down. But then you tap down a little bit more and you can see it going on there solidly. You can see it kind of, I can see it beating up right around in here a little bit. But then you just keep doing it, and when it turns all kind of, you know, solid like that, that's when it's ready to go. Although some of that, that being said, sometimes um, when I'm doing, um, 
inking up of certain types of images, um, gosh, sometimes it's really hard to tell if it's inked up or not. All right, same thing. A lot of detail in there. No problem with the uh, impression and the translation across there. I really don't need to be testing it on two pieces of paper like this, but um, maybe I'll do just one more here. But I will test all of the uh, all of the stamps in the uh, the new line, which we always have have to do. I'm not going to send anything out unless I'm you know 100 sure that everything on there is exactly. Um, as it should be, you know, even though I, I say I can tell, but, um, you know, you really want to test everything out and, you know, absolutely make sure about it. Okay. This is another range right here. And if it reminds anyone of, uh, that lives out in Arizona or is visited there, if it reminds them of the, uh, superstition range, and it's because it is, it's a really dramatic range that you can see out there in the distance that um, looks really amazing. I watched, uh, I've watched some hiking videos where they go out there and I don't know, there's certain areas within this range. It looks like it's just like not too far away, but like even you go there and um, just from the parking area of certain areas out there, it's, it's really, you got to do some bushwhacking to get up there and, uh, or these like old mines or something like that. But backgrounds right here, I've needed some backgrounds for my scenes that I've been uh, doing, um, some backdrops. I'd really like for this to have like a really big version of it. Um, like even like, like these right here, like see this one right here. It's just, you know, it's slightly bigger than that, like that, but I decided to go for, as I was mentioning in my other video, um, kind of introducing this set and what these stamps might, you know, will look like when I get them in. Um, I was able to get like, instead of doing like one big one, I can get like two kind of smaller ones in. So I thought people might kind of want that more these days. And I mean, these smaller ones, the smaller versions are really kind of catering more towards the, uh, you know, the, the quarter page, you know, standard size card. Larger ones are too, you know, they gives, it gives a little bit more of a, a sense of grandeur and majesty, you know, having a range kind of closer up to where, you know, the vantage point is. But I thought, meh, maybe these days, um, like I said, um, people will want, would rather have like just more stamps, you know what I mean? It gives them a few more options. With the larger stamp, it gives you more options in terms of using kind of smaller portions of it still and having it take up a, you know, a decent area within the card. And again, you know, talking about kind of scale and a sense of grandeur, you know, especially to a mountain range. So, I don't know. See these right here? I, I think these would be awesome for uh, all of these things right here. You know, it, you can do it like as a, like a, you know, desert planet or something like that, like Mars, you know, you watch uh, like the movie, The Martian or something like that. And, uh, you know, <laughs> these types of things could be out there. So I said, okay, so this is like out in Arizona, the superstitions. I mean, you can utilize these things wherever you want, you know, if I did some kind of pine trees, you know, with this in the distance or something like that. That could be like a Sedona type of thing. You know, the higher elevation areas. You can use this as a butte, um, I don't know, somewhere else. Uh, you know, these ones right here, I wouldn't have any problem, you know, having this like as a distant island or something like that in a tropical type of setting. These could be your, your palm trees at the base of it or something like that, or... You can have this with palm trees right around here, tropical lagoon, you know, type of thing. I mean, it looks kind of volcanic in nature almost. All right, so um, a smaller butte in the background like that, you know. I don't know if I would do many of these, but you can do well, like that same one out there in the distance, you know, another one like that. 
you can do a four corners type of thing. It's not, you know, if you live out there and it's like, hey, that's not, you know, four corners. You know, there's the three distinct, you know what I mean? But hey, you know, we're not out there to do like every single like landmark that's like specific to like one area. <laughs> you know, this is like scenic stamping. You kind of just utilize um, your, uh, your different imagery to, you know, to represent different areas, you know. Um, from kind of a textural standpoint or, you know, whatever geographic standpoint, you know. Um, these sand dunes right here, you know, they're in the desert, but why not make them for, you know, a beach or something like that? We think sand dunes, there's nothing on there, but sand dunes in the springtime, a lot of times it's like they're fully um, covered in, like, different... Um, desert um, annuals, you know, different types of flowers. So you can put some, you know, types of uh, flora on top of them. All right, this is the smaller sand dunes right here. Now, say I wouldn't do it side by side like this. This one would be like going off here. And then I would do a little bit of a lighter version of this lower portion right here, built up like here. So you don't have to do this and mask it off exactly. You can just kind of put it up here and then it goes from darker to fade, darker to fade. I'm talking about without these mountains right here, you know, as it goes off into the distance. One of my favorite places to hike are like sand dunes. Okay, let's see here. Let's go into um, some desert flora here. Two, four, six, seven, eight. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, designs in this line or this set right here. Okay, these are the ball cactus or I don't know, what they, I don't know ball or barrel are those the same? I think barrel ones grow a little bit more vertical, but these ball ones always kind of stay like you know, like like a bowling ball, you know. Type of thing. These ones, this was a tough design to do with, uh, you know, that texturing. And I didn't want to do like, um, like an outline, like round on the top, because, you know, it doesn't look like that. So I wanted to go all texturing. All right. So this one is really putting the um, engraving, engravers to the test right here. So that's, so I had to have a little bit of an outline, but it, I didn't want it just to be a straight line. It had to be kind of broken up texture on the top like that. So when you stamp this ball cacti, and yeah, these ball cacti I like that. When you do a flat impression, don't rock it up like that. You know, g giving it these harder edge tops like that. Kind of right down here, and then you give your pressure more along the base. Now don't do you know no pressure up here, you know, but just a little bit of pressure, and then put most of your pressure on the bottom so that you know those top areas don't stamp out you know too thickly. Okay, and then it'll give them a real three-dimensional look because you're going from dark to light up there like that. All right, that's that's the, that was the, I don't know, maybe I should have started off that one because that one's really kind of putting to, uh, to the test, um, you know, what that, uh, how well the engraving was done, okay? I don't know if it's all automatic or something like that, or if there's like a some guy, you know, working the, uh, you know, someone working the machine, you know, at the engravers, and you know, if they look at the um, artwork itself and say, okay, we need a little bit more of this here and there. Before I used to, th I think they used to kind of rock it around a little bit or something like that. That's what I was told um, in the past. Okay, that was at my little agave right there. Well, that was not really that was little. This one's like an even smaller version of the agave. Just needed a little bit of a different um, kind of uh, plant. And then plus I had room on the plate. So two agaves right here. Um, let's test out our little critters here now. Okay, now let's see this our little tail right here on the kangaroo rat. You want to put your pressure 
on more of the body of the rat like that. And then you get a nice narrow tail like that. Okay, let me do this again. And let me press down, add it, you know, uniformly on the body and the tail. And see how thick that came out right there. So, I mean, this is like, you know, it's a really small design too, so you don't want to press too hard. Okay, just like that. I mean, that little area on the back of it is darker on the uh, design itself, just so we can get some variation in there. Um, but you want this, that nice, delicate little tail like that. So if you're stamping out kind of larger designs and you're using a little bit more pressure, when you move to your smaller designs, especially with a delicate um, area like that, that's isolated from the mass of the stamp, just use your pressure around the thicker area. I was looking to see if I have my... Uh, not really on this one right here. This one's a big one, you know, but the smaller version of the reeds you want to stamp down here because this is the same type of thing. You have these isolated kind of areas. Now, these ones are all supported by each other, but you don't want to press too hard up here. You want to press down here where the mass is, okay, and not where the isolated areas go. But like I said, it's not really with the reeds. It's really the reed small one um, where the, uh, the blades are a little bit, you know, they're smaller, so, um, you know, more delicate type of thing. Yeah, it's not, it's not precarious or anything like that. Just don't smash it down, you know. Okay, so Howling Coyote, let's take a look here. All right, so see right in here, like right around that defining line on its chest and mouth, those exist. So it's always kind of deciding how thick do I make those little isolated lines or something like the tail here, you know, because you don't want it to not print out or for the engraver not, you know, for it not to engrave and, you know, be raised off the plate, but also, um, you know, when we're talking about a couple more generations of, uh, um, you know, whatever preliminary um, materials, you get the plate, you got the mold, you got the, you know, the pressing of the rubber, and then the impression, you know, you have to make sure that, that uh, those types of things, um, you know, are visible there. Okay, so let's see here. We got our little miner here, and I did have some space, and uh, this, I don't know how appropriate this is for this thing. You get a lot of mining out in the deserts, though. And they do do panning, you know, at least clearing of, uh, you know, their tailings or whatever coming out of a mine. But um, I just ran, I, I had a minute, I didn't want to have like a separate image for that. Okay, so we have two, four, six... 8, 10, 12, 13, did I get everything? Oh, I forgot about that, yeah, I was saying there, 13, where's the 14th one? I forgot I had the bats. I'm going to use those, these bats all the time. It's going to be in this set. No, it's not sold separately, but, you know, someone's like, I, I love bats, but I, you know, hey, I don't want, you know, a bunch of desert imagery or something like that. Well... Uh, this is the set that is going to be on. Yeah, same thing with the bats too. Don't like smash them down, you know. Don't smash the image down too forcefully. Otherwise, you're going to get some, you know, squished uh, bats in there, usually around on the perimeter. Again, you know, like, you know, this is like on the perimeter of this stamp right here. Um... Just light, even impressions. Again, okay, also, if you have, like, thicker, the thicker the ink, you know, the more it would kind of smash down. Um, uh, if you, if I re-ink this, I would be a little bit more careful about my impressions with uh, things like this little tail here. You know, the thinner lines uh, type of thing. I This is what I always recommend. Um, don't ink up your pads... Don't re-ink them, okay? Like how they come 
directly from the manufacturer if it's it's like if it's a super juicy pad when you get it okay in terms of your impression quality you want to get them maybe a little bit juicier than medium okay so you want about half the ink that you're i mean it you know it varies with you know different um, companies too and how wet your pad was when you got it maybe it's been sitting on the shore shelf for two years i don't know but your average pad or something like that i would let it go um you know down to medium when it starts getting a little medium dry or something like that re-ink it to just a little bit over medium dampness okay and that's going to give you and ter in terms of um using stampscape stamps at least because there's a lot of tight detail in my designs okay i try to get like really dense um little areas to represent various um gradations of gray so you know we don't have gray in any of these impressions right here but it's represented by they call it stippling or something like that you know what i mean um the concentration of texture or dots in a certain area okay but the tighter that um concentration like that represents like a 50 percent gray or something like that or at least ball cacti um the tighter that detail in there, the more prone it's going to be to um, kind of filling in with ink, puddling, okay, and stamping that out and then not getting that degree of variation within your designs like that. So, again, kind of the more medium, you know, um, re-inking of your pads is typically uh, the best... Um, whatever uh range uh with each pad i i don't know i'm thinking about these designs right here i have part trouble putting things into words like that so anyways yeah just you don't want everything puddling now sometimes i make an accident you know it's like uh, when i was doing but i thought i was gonna i was gonna do a bunch of um stamp sketching scenes which i'll do later on today um, in the Friday Night Live, but um, sometimes I over-ink this, or when I go to a, like a convention, and I think, okay, I don't want to be taking too much time to re-ink during the middle of the show, um, which I should do, but last time when I went out to Arizona, and it, and it was also out and like demonstrating at the Arizona show, my inks are just drying out faster, so I really over-inked my pad, so it was like getting these kind of puddled images. I mean, it looked okay, but... Um, you know, I just didn't have the uh, the detail, you know, that I would normally have, you know, 98%, you know, the rest of the time when I'm not at a show or something like that. So uh, sometimes I over ink a little bit. So if you do that, you know, what you do is, you know, when you ink up, just kind of what I do is I ink up, you know, I'd have this on a, you know, amount like this. But sometimes what I do is when I ink up, I dab to build up the ink, but then I kind of slightly wipe it off. I do this like I don't know, not even a quarter inch, maybe a little under a quarter inch drag so that it kind of drags off some of the over inked up areas where it might be um, like bubbles of ink on the surface like that. OK, uh, but that's a little technical thing. Like I said, I mean, if you lose some of the uh, the details in there, it'll just look a little bit darker. Um, but um, I don't know, these ones right here have a lot of detail in them and a lot of detail retention through that uh, engraving process, which I'm really happy about. All right, so anyways, impression tests successful. I'll start uh, working on uh, your orders. If you've placed uh, pre-sale orders, I'll probably take pre-sale orders for one more day uh, at the special price for this set right here. But um, can't wait to get these out to everyone that's pre-ordered. Thank you for your orders, by the way. And um, can't wait to see what everyone does with these. Um, that's one of the. It's exciting for me to use the stamps, but it's always more exciting for me to see what other people are doing with the stamps. And you know what I mean. You want to see people enjoy, um, you know, you know your your products out there. So uh, that's always really exciting for me to see those types of things. So I don't know if anyone's on social media, you know, but um, if you are in, in the Facebook group or something like that, I'll see your pieces up there if you post. Uh, some people are a little bit shy about posting, but um, 
you know, and I don't know, maybe they'd be even more kind of nervous about sending it to me, but I'd love to see what you're doing. If you don't, if you're not on Facebook and, you know, whatever, you know, Instagram and all that. Uh, but, um, if you ever get any, um, imagery or something like that, and you have any questions about it or running into any kind of issues, um, send me, um, a photograph of it and we'll get you, uh, kind of, um, you know, on your way as far as achieving the, uh, the results that you're looking at, you know, looking for, um, there's certain types of things like, you know, uh, media surface compatibility things, you know, someone, I might do something with this on foil or something like that, but I'll use a stays on ink, but sometimes, uh, someone might use, okay, I, let me, I used my, you know, whatever brand of ink, you know, and it, it was a dye-based ink on the foil, and they're saying, oh, you know, I, I can't get it to dry or something like that. You know, that that's a media surface compatibility issue with that. But we'll, you know what I mean? You, you send me those times, and you don't need to be embarrassed about it or anything like that. But I'll tell, I'll, you know, we'll get you using the right um, combinations of ink and surface, you know, you know, in order to get you uh, the results that you're going after too, so... All right, thanks for watching, and we'll, if anyone uh, checks uh, it out later on, we'll be on with the Stampscapes Friday Night Live, and we'll do some stamp sketching with these uh, stamps.